morning. We're in Sarajevo, it is day two here. We're about to head on a walking tour of the city. We've had a little explore yesterday, but we want to learn a little bit more of the culture and the history because from what we've seen, there's a lot to know about this city. Behind me is the Ghazi Huzrev Beg Mosque. I hope I said that correctly, but it's one of the most famous mosques in Sarajevo. But we'll learn an interesting fact. One of the world's first public toilets was built here two years before even the mosque was finished. So it's 1530 the toilet was made. The mosque wasn't finished till 1532. Pretty interesting. The point we've just reached now is the point where east meets west. Now the line literally goes down the street and on one side of the street you've got all the Ottoman style buildings and on the other side of the street you've got all the Austro-Hungary style buildings. Completely opposite designs but incredibly interesting to see. We've come back to the well after our tour guide told us the story because there's two sides. So the other day, I drank from the opposite side, but there's actually two different myths on each side. On this side, it's kind of the one you want to drink, because this means that your heart is in Sarajevo and you will return to Sarajevo. The opposite side means that if you drink from there, which I did, you will never, is it, you'll never leave Sarajevo and... No, it's worse. It's, no. you'll find a Bosnian boyfriend oh, and yeah. never leave. Oops. You'll so find I'll be replaced. Yeah, you'll find a Bosnian boyfriend and never leave. So basically that means, sorry Dan, I'm on the look for a new man. I better drink from this side just to even it up. Yeah, get some peace if you uh, drink from the other side. But yeah, let's drink from this side. How was it? Good news, it means I'm coming back. And you've got me as a boyfriend still. Whoa. <laughs> Look at them all. Some you know that literally has taken every bone in Daniel's body to not absolutely run away in fear when that happened. But well done. All for the content, baby. <laughs> it's that time of the morning where we need a wee coffee. So we tried to come here last night, but it was closed. So we're gonna go and have a wee Bosnian coffee, I think. We've just come into the coffee shop. It's really cute. We're the only people here actually. And we've got some Christmas decorations up. Um, but yeah, we've got our two Bosnian coffees ordered and we've got such a nice view down and you can see into like the street below. I love Sarajevo. It's honestly like it's wildly exceeded my expectations. I didn't know what to expect, but it's just wow, what a place. We've got our Bosnian coffees and my favourite thing and Dan's is oh, oh it's dusting everywhere but they, get, they are served with a Turkish delight and we checked on our tour yesterday and they are called a Turkish delight here as well. So I've not put sugar in mine, I'm just drinking it like this. Oh, it's so good. The coffee, the name of this place is CEFJ. It's like CEFJ. Since we've been in Central Europe for the past like three months almost, we've just been craving like a little bit of Asia and we've got that taster since we've come to Sarajevo and it's just like, oh, I love it, like love it so much. It's really cool because obviously in Sarajevo you have the mix of like European and Ottoman cultures so it's a really nice vibe. Um, it does feel a little bit like you're in like Istanbul, but also it feels like you're maybe in a European city. So we like Sarajevo and we like Bosnian coffee. <laughs> Do 
check out that view behind me. We've basically hiked up to the Yellow Fortress, which is about a 15 minute walk from the old town, but the view here is incredible. You can see the whole of Sarajevo. Well, you're meant to be able to. It's a bit smoggy today. It's been smoggy that actually the past couple of days. Yesterday it was so bad the airport was closed. All the flights were cancelled due to the smog, but I've heard that it's an amazing sunset up here as well. Popular for that. And there is a small little cafe too, but all the mountains in the background, the old town, the city, it's an absolutely incredible viewpoint. And where we actually are, the Yellow Fortress, that used to be an old uh, defence wall, so has a perfect view of the city. We're inside after a cold walking tour, and our guide, who's very good, uh, recommended this Burek stop here in the old town of Sarajevo. I've gone for the spinach one with the yogurt sauce as well. And Ash has gone with the cheese one with yogurt sauce. Looks so good. But let's try it. And we've got Iran, our favourite. So this is Bosnian Burek. And then they serve it by weight. So that's what you pay. But let's try it anyway. I'll stop off on it. <laughs> Just what you want. So good, but with the sauce, it's so nice. Been out in the cold for two hours. This is the perfect way to warm up. That was delicious, but I do think it could be time for a beer, and we've got quite a unique bar to show you. So come with us as we head to Sarajevo Brewery. We've just arrived at Sarajevo Brewery. Do you know what that means? It's beer o'clock. Let's go. We just come through the doors and it literally just smells like a Weatherspoon's pub back home. Let's check out. So we've come in today to try a Bosnian beer, our first one. And yeah, this place is really cool. It feels really historic. As I've said, it does feel a bit like we're in a Weatherspoons. If you've been to the UK, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And yeah, the toilets are down the stairs, round the corner and half a mile away. The Sarajevo Brewery actually has a huge part in Bosnia's history, especially during the Sage of Sarajevo. During this time, a lot of the water supply around the city was cut off. And because the brewery had its own supply to make the beer, it meant that it supplied a lot of water to the city. Obviously, along with a few beers too. But yeah, pretty cool. Zivelli. traditional Bosnian food here in Sarajevo. This is called a sevapi. Sev and it's basically mini sausages and you have it with cream cheese as well. But this place we're at is the oldest one in Sarajevo and it's called Nune. And he supposedly had a secret recipe that's been passed down the generations. I'm on my way to try it just now. Well, you are. <laughs> so look, it's just tiny little sausages. Dip it in there. So good. Yeah? Yeah. What's it taste like? It's hard to describe what it tastes like. It's, it's 
like a flame grilled sausage. Nice. That's how I describe it. And it's really nice with the cream cheese as well and the onion. I'll need to get a bit of bread as well. So I'm going for it now. And this was only about two pounds. Good. Definitely come here, my new side. Yeah. So as usual, I got FOMO from Dan's food. I tried the bread and I tried the cheese. So I ordered the bread and the cheese. So I got the vegetarian version. And this, honestly, unreal. The, the cheese, the consistency is a little bit like, reminds me of clotted cream. So it's quite like a thick, but like creamy texture. Not like the cream cheese you would know from home, but the taste is unbelievable. Cheers. Okay. Nuni in Sarajevo was 100% worth the recommendation. It's down a small alleyway just in the centre of Sarajevo. The staff were lovely, the food was amazing, and I think the total bill came to about £4, £3. Ashley had the bread and cheese, which was £1, and I had the sabapi which was two pounds. Um, but yeah, really nice Bosnian food and one of the highest rated places in, on TripAdvisor in the whole of Sarajevo. So now that we've just had some banging food, next up, we're obviously craving something a bit sweet. We learned about Bosnian baklava on our walking tour today. The difference between Bosnian baklava from the standard like Turkish baklava that we've had before is that in Bosnia they use walnuts which is great news for someone like me with a peanut allergy. No peanuts in sight. So we're gonna have that, and hopefully along with a Bosnian coffee to round off the night. Let's go. We have come in and ordered our desserts. We have gone for Bosnian coffee. I've gone for household baklava, which he doesn't think has peanuts, but we'll find out. And Dan has gone for Tres Leche Cake, which was recommended also by our guy on the tour. So yeah, let's give it all a go. I love the way they serve it, like in this plate and... Oh, oh no, my coffee's spilling. That didn't work so well. Who's this rookie? Give it a minute. Oopsie. I love the way the coffee is all presented. Well, let's get into the main event. Tres Leches cake. They look so nice. Recommended by our guide. It might be a local dish, I'm not sure, but he certainly said try it. Ooh, very sweet. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So good. I love what, it. What's it taste like? Sweetness overload. Just like sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sugar and cream. But I love the coffee culture here. There's yeah. so many coffee houses where people sit for like an hour just drinking coffee, normally having a cigarette as well. <laughs> yeah. So having loads of cakes. So Sounds nice. good to us. Dan's trying to get past the pigeons, but because the guy's got food, they're all going nuts. <laughs> There's Daniel channeling his inner pigeon whisperer. He looks really interested in all these pigeons. Oh, there he goes. He's spotted me now. Is he gonna walk through them? Let's see. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna face his fears again? Come on, Dan, you can do it. Pigeon boy. Oh, no. <laughs> Cut. No, I think he's there. Uh... Is he? Walk through. Come on. Come on. You're woos. Oh, no, he can't do it. He can't do it. 
taken the he's taken the easy route. Not fancy walking through the pigeons. They own this square.